Welcome to Sports Talk. Hello and welcome to the Connect from Top Notch Sports. Today we're going to go over our 2022 NFL scouting analysis. Last year we did a similar video to the 2021 NFL scouting analysis for the quarterbacks. Now it's 2022. Um, I have a pretty good track record on quarterbacks over the last few years. Um, again, a lot of these guys that you got to wait and see how their careers pan out before you know, finally say, all right, yeah, he was right or no, he was wrong. Uh, and I've been doing it since 2018, so every single year has been doing pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, our channel, we did 2019, 2020, but our channel on 2019, 2020, we got shut down. Luckily, last year's video is out, and nothing changes. Again, so you're going to see a lot of last year's scouting in this video, and we're going to hop right along. So here we go. Let's hop right into this video. It's probably going to be around 35 to 40-ish minutes, if I had to guess, but we'll see how it goes. So let's hop right into the presentation I put together. All right, so here we go. Here is the 2022 quarterback prospect by, yes, me, Nick. Um, we got a lot to go over, so let's hop right into it. All right, here you go. Here's my track record. And as you can see, let's start with 2018. It's the same thing I did last year. You're going to see this in last year's video. You're going to see it every single year. I'm going to show you my track record. And as you can see here in 2018, my number one quarterback was Josh Allen. And all the draft analysts said, oh, Josh Allen, he's not going to be that good. Again, most people had it, Sam Darnold one, Baker Mayfield two, Josh Rosen three, and then they had Josh Allen and then Lamar Jackson. Well, you can see my 2018 track record is much better than most of the draft analysts, uh, analysts, I'm sorry. 2019, same thing. A lot of people said Dwayne Haskins is going to be the best quarterback, followed by, you know, Kyler Murray or Kyler Murray, then Dwayne Haskins. I wasn't buying into the Dwayne Haskins nonsense. And once again, you see Kyler Murray one, Daniel Jones two, Drew Locke three, and Dwayne Haskins four. After, you, you know, 2018 and 2019, I can pretty much say, you know, 2018, Josh Allen, absolutely, probably the number one. Lamar Jackson, probably, absolutely the number two. I did probably, now you can go back and say Sam Darnold was not the number three. But again, my goal in this video is to not predict how good these quarterbacks' careers are going to be. It's how good, how talented is that quarterback? And in my opinion, at the time of that video, Sam Darnold was more talented, in my opinion, had more potential, and I thought like was going to have a better career in the same situation that someone like Baker Mayfield would. And I think you can still possibly maybe argue this. Could Sam Darnold have been better in Cleveland than Baker Mayfield was? And what would Baker Mayfield been as good as Sam Darnold in New York? I don't know. I mean, that's something that we will never know. And again, I'm not going to cover my ass on that one. I'm going to be honest. I think I got that one wrong. So again, I do think Baker Mayfield was a better quarterback. And that's something I did get wrong. But you got to factor in the destination. And that's not the goal of this video. That would be in the NFL draft grades video we'll do after everyone's been drafted. But again, you know, 2019, I had Murray one, Jones two, Lock three, Haskins four. I feel like that was pretty accurate. 2020, everyone said tank for Tua, tank for Tua. That was a big thing, right? Tank for Tua. Well, I said, no, you don't want to tank for Tua. You'd rather tank for Herbert and tank for Burrow, you know, Joe. And uh, again, I think it was right here. Mike was also a big fan of Justin Herbert in 2020. Uh, Mike was also a big fan of Justin Burrow. And both of us really didn't love Tua. Uh, There's a lot of questions about Joe Burrow in the sense of, Joe Burrow only had one good year. He's not going to be that good. I said, well, watch his film. It's pretty special. Justin Herbert, ah, he stayed in Eugene, Oregon for all four years. You know, what could he do outside of Eugene? He's a very quiet kid. I'm sorry. He was the most talented kid. Jordan Love had his number three. Um, I still don't really regret that. I think his potential is through the roof. Uh, but again, it's not looking so hot. And Tua had a four. Jacob Eason, five. Jacob Eason's the guy, in my opinion that was very talented, but he had a lot of off-field concerns. And I still think that that is what is making him not be so good. Jalen Hurts had at six. I know he was a really good leader in the locker room. I just didn't see the talent, nor do I still see the talent. He's special, but I think he's one of those mediocre special where it's kind of dangerous. I don't know when Philly will ever truly tap out with Jalen Hurts and move on. So that's going to hurt Philadelphia, I think, in the long run. And last but not least, I had the least favorite was Jake Fromm. Still don't like Jake Fromm. 2021, last year's analysis. Zach Wilson was my number one. I still believe that Zach Wilson is the most talented quarterback that came out of that draft class. His arm is amazing. Uh, he can make some amazing throws, honestly, across his body. He has the ability to do this. The guy can throw the ball over 70 yards on film. I saw on film, he threw the ball 70 yards across his body, perfectly accurate in college. 
He has the most potential. I am not going to deny that. He may not be the best quarterback, okay? He went to the New York Jets. He doesn't have a lot of help, but I do feel like he was the most talented. Trevor Lawrence, number two. Matt Jones, number three. Everyone hated when I said Matt Jones, three. Matt Jones, three. What are you, are you nuts? The guy can't do anything. The guy throws a great anticipation. He reads the defense very well. I really like Matt Jones, okay? And I got to say, I'm one of the only analysts that got Matt Jones right, in my opinion. I also had Kellamon number four. Hmm. Right. A lot of people are going to give me heat on that one. And what I can start saying, maybe I can start kicking myself in the ass a little bit. I really like Mond. Maybe I overrated him a little bit. I think his film really stood out to me. Uh, but we'll see if he ever actually gives a, gets given a chance. You know, Wilson got a chance. Lawrence got a chance. Jones got a chance. Lance is going to be given a chance. And Fields has gotten a chance. And Davis Mills, for the love of God, gotten a chance. Okay. But, you know, you look at Matt Jones, I mean, Kellen Mond. And Kellamon's never been given that chance. I want to see if he's given that chance in the NFL, how he would do. Uh, Trey Lance, I said, was overrated. Uh, very, has a lot of potential, right? Was recruited as a safety in college, uh, but he wanted to be a quarterback. Great story. You know, want to be a quarterback. So he pursues his dream as a quarterback. So it was like 50 touchdowns, zero interceptions. And then his next year, not so great. You know, he only plays like one or two games, maybe three games because of COVID. And then that's all we got to say. No experience. That's what concerned me was no experience. And again, some people are saying he's still not ready in the NFL. Look, has a lot, has a crazy good arm. Uh, but my concern is, is that he throws a lot of knuckleballs, doesn't know when to take some steam off the football. So there's a lot of questions about Trey Lance. Justin Fields, I just personally thought was, again, had a lot of potential. Can move, could throw really hard, right? Had a lot of zip on the football, had a nice arm downfield but just couldn't read a defense, in my opinion. The offense that he ran in Ohio State was suited around him. Davis Mills was one of those guys that said, you got to look out for. I really like Davis Mills, and I really think that he could be decent. Kyle Trask, not a big fan of Jamie Newman, not a big fan of. Let's hop into this year, and I'm sorry, my mouth is getting a little dry, so let me take a sip of this water real fast. All right, I'm good. Let's hop into this now and look at my grade scale. Here's my grade scale. It didn't change from last year to this year. Uh, what do I grade? Well, my grade scale is a different grade than my personal analysis. My grade scale is going to give you a uh, non-subjective, an objective grade on each player. And again, you can take that grade or you can take my personal analysis. If you trust just my grade scale and you don't want my biases to hop in there, well, then you're going to look at this. Personally, I think both of them factor in pretty well. I, I, I of course... Uh, prefer my personal analysis over my grade scale because my grade scale factors in what is being graded only. It doesn't factor in the leadership grades and all that stuff and, and what I just personally feel like is right. But again, this is a non-objective way to look at it. So if, again, if you want to just look at it like this, and this is one way to look at it. So here we go. Another reason why I like my personal analysis real fast is because my personal analysis, look, if you are a non-mobile quarterback, on my grade scale, you get a negative grade, right? You get a bad grade for mobility and that will hurt your grade. In my personal analysis, I understand, you know, it's not a computer engine. I understand that you may be a pocket passer. So the mobility is not going to hurt you as much. Not being mobile won't hurt you as much in my personal analysis as it would on the grade scale. So what do I grade? I grade the in-game throwing, just how they throw in the game all around, right? I want to look at that. Their throw power, how much zip do they put on the football? That's a huge one. I really like looking at that. That's something that Matt Jones, I feel like, had. But Matt Jones didn't have a lot of arm strength. How far can you throw the football? You know, arm strength is something good to look at. Uh, Josh Allen can throw the ball like 80, 85 yards down the field. But, you know, uh, not all quarterbacks can throw the ball 80, 85 yards down the field. Most quarterbacks don't throw the ball 80, 85 yards down the field. But it's something to look at because, again, it shows you that you can do this and it shows you what your potential can be. Pocket awareness, how good do you see pressure coming in? This is something that usually people have or they don't have. Being good in the pocket. Joe Burrow is a guy that had incredible pocket awareness, one of the best I've ever seen. Pocket mobility, not mobility. Look, Tom Brady had good pocket mobility. You watch him play the Rams in the NFC conference, uh, in the NFC uh, playoffs, him versus the Rams. He had really good pocket mobility, but he's not mobile. He's not a mobile quarterback. So pocket mobility says, how good can you navigate around in the pocket to move around and extend the play? Accuracy. Oh, this is a big one. How accurate are you every single play? A quarterback's number one thing, in my opinion, is how accurate they are. Nothing matters if you're not accurate. But again, sometimes, again, I, I kind of 
took Josh Allen. I said, well, look, he has a crazy arm. He's not always the most accurate, but what he can be is special. And I sometimes die that down a little bit, and I did have Allen ranked high. So from year to year, I change, you know, at what I grade highly. Touch, how good touch they throw. Um, You know, they can throw a go ball, and they can overshoot it, they can undershoot it, or is it just perfectly thrown in the bread basket? The receiver didn't have to slow down, didn't have to speed up, just perfectly thrown. Throw on the run, can they throw on the run? Anticipation, do they throw with anticipation? Something, again, that Matt Jones is really good at throwing with anticipation. Decision-making, do they make good good decisions? Uh, this is huge, right? If you're making bad decisions in college, oh, God help you in the NFL. Something that, you know, Zach Wilson started to see him. Can they throw in a tight window? Can they zip the ball in between two defenders and make a great throw? That's something that I saw Justin Herbert do that was special to him, and I had to give him a good grade here. Mental adjustments. Are they getting sat there every play? Are they making adjustments, and they're changing the play calls at the line of scrimmage? And last but not least, their mobility. Can they move around? This should help them too. And again, this grade and, and this current analysis, this video is only after their film study, not after their pro days and combine. I hope to come out with a video after their pro day, after the combine to give you more stuff. But I can't promise you that. I'm a very busy person. So, uh, you know, I coach football in real life. I am a college student. And I am also, you know, doing my own stuff with college in general. It's just a lot. And I got to get out the NFL salary cap videos. So a lot coming for you in the office. And be sure to stay tuned. Leave a like and subscribe. Here we go. Let's hop into the first person. This is in no particular order. This is just the way that I put the video together. It's Kenny Pickett. Oh, the guy from Pitt. Well, Kenny Pickett is six foot two, 225, according to some of the things that I looked at. Again, nothing is official yet because the combine hasn't came out yet. Here are my notes on Kenny Pickett. This kid can do everything. He can move around in the pocket, escape the pocket on occasion, and throw the ball accurately and precisely on almost every single throw. Does he have a cannon of an arm? No. But can he deliver a tight spiral in the back of the end zone between two defenders? Yeah, absolutely. He throws with anticipation and is accurate on most of his throws. He is not willing to put his body on the line running the ball, but he is still mobile enough to hurt the defense. Sometimes his playmaking ability gets him in trouble as he forces some balls down the field. So again, look, he's going to move, okay? This guy is going to run. Is he willing to put his body on the line? No. And what do I mean by that? Well, watch Josh Allen play. That guy is willing to put his body on the line and run over a defender. Pitt is going to slide. And that's kind of a strength. Why is it a strength? Because you think about it, you don't want your franchise quarterback trying to run somebody over. It's also a weakness. You know, if it's fourth, uh, not fourth, but let's say it's third and three and a defender's there, he, he's not going to fight for the first down. He's just going to slide and move on to the next play. You got to respect it, okay? He, he, you're messing with a man's career here. Uh, he earned a 77 as his quarterback grade. What does this grade mean? Well, I'm going to tell you before everything. This is, means that he scored a 77%. He scored 77% of the 100 possible points being able to be earned. Now, I'm pretty sure that my quarterback race guy has 144 possible points. So he earned 77% of the 140-something points being able to be scored. Here's his strength. I feel like his arm's a strength, okay, meaning he throws with good zip. He has a good arm. He doesn't have the, you know, throwing the ball 90 yards down the field, but I'm pretty sure he can throw it about 63 is what I saw on film, which is about average for an NFL quarterback coming out of college. He has good mobility. He can extend plays down the field by using his mobility, and he's not just going to look to run. He's good at throwing on the run. He keeps his eyes downfield. Look, when you look at this, this tells you a story. He has a good arm. He's mobile. He can extend plays with his mobility. He's good at throwing on the run when he gets outside of the pocket, and he keeps his eyes downfield. I love quarterbacks that throw the ball downfield. When you watch Justin Fields, when you watch Trey Lance in college, when they had a chance to run, they run. Kenny Pickett looks to throw the football. He keeps his eyes downfield. I absolutely love that. That's huge. He has great pocket awareness. Really love his pocket awareness. He has good pocket mobility. He has good accuracy. He throws with touch, and he anticipates routes. His one weakness, in my opinion, his one weakness is he forces balls at times that he probably shouldn't throw. And I also don't like that he wears two gloves, but that's just my opinion. Here's his in-depth breakdown. His throwing grade earned the 83%. His mobility grade earned the 71%. And his awareness grade earned a 69%. 
Here's his uh, depth. I mean, here's his in-depth breakdown. You're more than welcome to look at each one of these hip pulls, compare them to everybody. This is my grade scale. This is what it does. Okay, it makes you look at these things, and this is what it grades on. Non-biased. There's a grade on everything. This is why he earned the grade that he did of a 77. Okay, so look at this hip pulls. I'm not going to go through each one of these. Again, I'm not going to take a long time on any of these guys. If you want to look at these, you can hit pause on the video. You're more than welcome to take a picture, do whatever the hell you want. Let's go to the next guy, Matt Coral. All right, Matt Coral. All right, this is a guy that her also earned the second highest grade on my grade scale. Again, this is not me, my personal analysis. If you want to see my personal analysis, watch it at the very end of the video. It will be there. Matt Corral, okay, he's six foot one, 205, according to a few of the websites I looked up. Again, nothing's official. Here's my notes on Matt Corral. This kid is an interesting prospect, and I need to look more into him, okay? So, again, the pro day is not done yet. The combine is not done yet. I want to watch that. There are a lot of areas that I like and some that I do not. It seems like he has a very strong arm, the strongest in the draft, and he can throw the ball down the field the farthest. And he's a tough football player. He wants to win games, and he's willing to put his body on the line. He kind of reminds me of Baker Mayfield in that aspect, right? He's willing to put his body on the line. A Josh Allen, again, willing to put his body on the line to, you know, pick up two or three yards. And you saw when it came down to it, the man played in the bowl game and got hurt because he truly wanted to win a bowl game. Some of that mean, make, means absolutely nothing to him or his career. He wanted to be there with his team. And that I value highly in a quarterback. Um, look. He has a great touch on his deep downfield passes, but he tends to underthrow receivers at times on deep balls. So he throws with good touch on most of his throws, but at times on deep balls, he does tend to underthrow it slightly. So again, a good receiver, they're going to slow down and they're going to catch the football. Uh, he also seems to put balls behind the receivers on crossing routes occasionally. He can be mobile when he wants to and he likes to run. He is not the most agile guy in the world. I love his toughness and his deep ball ability, but he has a lot of room to grow. Let me tell you something about Matt Corral. He is one of the most, you know, I honestly think he has one of the most potential in this draft. He has a great arm, one of the best arms, if not the best arm in this draft for downfield ability. Uh, so, again, what does he have? His strengths. Great arm. He has a toughness, and he has the will to win, man. I love having the will to win. He's willing to put his body on the line, okay? And I love that in a quarterback, but I also hate that in a quarterback, okay? Because, again, this could lead to a lot of injuries. You got to look at the pro and cons a lot of these things. Great arm talent, one of the best arm talents in this draft. Good zip, good mobility, good pocket mobility. This guy can step up in the pocket, a stem plays. And he's willing to put his body on the line. This is a strength and aspect of your team needs a first down, he'll get it for you. He will put his body on the line and get it for you. I love his leadership. I love his, his arm ability. Some of his weaknesses, he misses some throws. He's inaccurate. He throws a ball behind the guy sometimes on crossing patterns. He also tends to underthrow some deep balls at times. He has the arm, okay? He, this guy can throw the ball 70 yards down the field without, you know, without hesitation. But sometimes he does underthrow his receivers on these. It's not that he can't do it. It's just that you got to somewhat question the touch a little bit, okay? That's something you got to question. He has good touch. He doesn't have great touch. His pocket awareness, he tends to get sacked a lot. Uh, he doesn't really step up. He moves around good in the pocket, but he doesn't just feel pressure that good, and that can lead to some injuries and, you know, uh, strip sacks that you don't really want to see. And, again, a weakness is willing to put his body on the line. As much of his strength, he's willing to pick up that first down. It's a weakness. He can also get hurt. Here's the in-depth breakdown. You know, he earned a 79% for his throwing grade, a 75% for his mobility grade, and a 65% for his awareness grade. You look at here, you're more than welcome to take a look and look at anything you want to look at here to see his grades. Hit pause. I'm not going to break it down for you. But again, some of the things I will show you, his throw power is up there with some of the best of them, and his arm strength is up there with some of the best of them. All right, the next guy is Carson Strong. All right, so Carson Strong is a guy that's another very interesting prospect, and he earned a 71 grade on my grade scale. Let's break him down real fast. First things first, according to the few websites I saw, he's six foot four, 215 pounds. Okay, let's look into my notes. This kid is a big guy who's willing to hit the check down when nothing is open downfield. He has a strong arm and throws with nice, nice, nice zip. I mean, amazing zip. 
I would like to see him throw with anticipation a little bit more, but he's not afraid to get his check down, with, which is a good thing. He throws a nice deep ball with good touch. He truly may have the best zip I've ever seen in a long time. He is not mobile, nor is he going to use his legs to beat any team. This guy only weapon is mainly his arm, but at times makes questionable decisions trying to force the ball down the field. This is my best, uh, you know, description of Carson Strong. The man has the arm to zip it in the tightest window I've ever seen. Up there with Justin Herbert as the strongest arm I've ever seen. I mean, in, in the ability to just squeeze it between two defenders. But that also concerns me with some of his decision-making. He will make questionable, questionable, questionable decisions. But man, does his arm speak because he can squeeze it in the window. The question I have is, for him, will he be able to squeeze it in tight windows in the NFL? Because the windows in college were tight. Imagine if he tried to do this in the NFL, the windows are even tighter. But his arm man is up there with the best of them, meaning he can throw it. I mean, I think he can knock down a brick wall with his arm. He has a great arm, a great arm. The match on film I saw was 63 yards, but I feel like he can throw more. He has amazing zip, the best zip I've seen in years, to be honest with you. He can throw it in the tightest window I've ever seen, and he's willing to hit the check down. But here are some of his weaknesses. His decision-making is a weakness. I get nervous. He squeezes in windows, but man, why are you even testing some of these windows? I guess if his arm speaks for himself, I, I guess if he can do it, why not? He forces some balls, right? Again, that goes back to decision-making. Some balls just should not be forced. Hit the check down, throw it to the slant. He's not shy to throw it to his check down, okay? He will do it. He'll look deep ball or check down, but I'd rather him just throw a slant or a drag or an out route. He doesn't do it. It's usually deep ball or check down. Uh, his anticipation, he doesn't throw with a lot of anticipation. That concerns me a lot. Great arm, but you got to throw with the anticipation when you get into the NFL. Doesn't have that great mobility, in my opinion. Not at all. I mean, I know he hurt his knee in college and he was wearing a knee brace. Maybe that has something to do with his film not looking so hot with his mobility, but I didn't see it. And last but not least, his accuracy. It's not always the most accurate ball. I mean, man, again, I cannot stress enough. He has some of the best zip I've ever seen. But his decision-making, his forcing balls, and his inaccurate passes at times does scare me. Here's his in-depth breakdown. His throwing grade got an 80. That's one of the higher ones. Mobility of 50 and a 67 for his awareness raise. Again, these mean he scored 80% of the points allowed in the throwing area, 50% of the mobility area, and 67% in the awareness area. Here's his in-depth breakdown, his main breakdown. You're more than welcome to take a pause. Look at this, however you want, and let's go into the next guy. All right, the next guy is Desmond Ritter. Now, Desmond Ritter, let's start with the height and weight. Six foot four, 215, and boy, is he an interesting prospect as well. Let's go into his notes. This kid has a lot of potential. He's mobile. He has a good arm and throws well. The issue is that he is not the most electric player. He is a good runner. He is decent. He's a decent thrower, but nothing that he does stands out to me. An example of this can be how Lamar is a great runner. Josh Allen has a special arm. Justin Herbert was the best prospect I have ever watched in my lifetime. Ritter has glimpses of good running, some good throwing, but nothing stands out as special, which makes him an all-around decent prospect. The main issue surrounding him is that he often misses throws. Okay, look, what I'm trying to say about Ritter is when it comes down to it, will he make the big throw to win the game? I can't tell you he will. Will he make the big run to win a game? I can't tell you he will. He's good at everything, but nothing special. And that's what somewhat scares me. Let's hop into Desmond Ritter real fast, his strengths. He's mobile, right? He has good mobility. He can run. He has a good zip on some of his throws. He has good pocket mobility. Again, he won't just look to just run right away. He'll, he'll step up in the pocket, move around in the pocket, you know, look for time. And last but not least, he's throwing on the run ability. He's good at throwing on the run. He's not bad. I'll be honest with you. He's not bad at throwing on the run, which I like to say. His weaknesses, he doesn't throw with the anticipation all the time. His arm strength, he had the max on film I only saw with him was 55 yards. Again, that's not terrible. I mean, Matt Jones is about 55 as well, but it's something you got to look at. And last but not least, his accuracy. He's not the most accurate quarterback. Something that, again, some like Matt Jones had was accuracy. Desmond Ritter is not the most accurate. So, again, has some glimpses of good. He can run, you know, and he can, he can throw, but he doesn't have a crazy good arm, and he doesn't have this amazing mobility that makes me like, wow, you know, he's special. Here's his in-depth breakdown. He scored a 73% for his throwing grade, 79% for his mobility grade, and a 65% for his awareness grade. Here's his breakdown. If you want to look at it, you're more than welcome. Hit pause, but let's move on to the next guy. 
who is Malik Willis. Why is he way down here? It's not my fault why he's way down here. This is just, this is not a special order. It's just, again, at the end of the video, I'll have my, my personal analysis ranking. Here we go. The guy is six foot one, 215. Okay, a little bit smaller. Okay, that's something you gotta look at. This kid is a hard study. Has many flashes, throws a great touch, but to wide open receivers. He is very patient in the pocket. When he decides to run, he is extremely fast, but not very elusive. He's not like a Lamar Jackson or a Kyler Murray, where he's going to juke out 14 defenders and then pick up yard. 14, Nick, there's only 11 on the football field. And I'll tell you something, Lamar could probably juke out the same guy twice. He looks to throw the ball first, which is, I love. I do love that in him. But when nothing is open, he pulls it down too quickly rather than buying time to create something downfield. Can squeeze a ball into tight coverage at times, but mainly a pay playmaker with his legs. Very quick release, but it seems like when defenses send pressure, he is not at his best. Does not seem to go through his progression, looks at main target, then immediately checks down to, you know, the check down. Uh, offense is built around him using his legs and throwing to one side of the field. Lastly, does not seem to make mental adjustments. He will be sacked all game long if he cannot read the defense. He takes sacks in bad situations trying to make plays. I've seen Malik Willis make great plays. I've seen Malik Willis make some plays where I just scratched my head. Let's go over his strengths. Great speed. He's a throw first quarterback, which I love. Kyler Murray was also a throw first quarterback. He has a very quick release. He's mobile, one of the most mobile quarterbacks, if not the most mobile. I would say the most mobile quarterback in this draft class. Good pocket mobility. He will extend plays, and he has good zip. He really does. The match on film I saw was 58 yards, which is about a little bit below average. Weakness. He doesn't go through all his, all his progressions, right? Not all progressions does he go through. He's mobility, but not for passing. He will run not to make a pass down the field, but to run. OK, he goes main read. My main read. Nope, nothing. Check down. OK, right away. He doesn't go through his progression, which scares me. His offense is strictly designed around him in college. He would roll out to the right, which cuts off the entire left side of the field. It helps him because his mobility, if nothing's open to the right, he can just take off. Right. But it also cuts off half the field, which hurts. So you're going to need a really good offensive coordinator. Or head coach is going to design an offense around Malik Willis. And here it is again, cuts off half the field by rolling out. That, that's what I just said. And does not make blitz adjustments. He doesn't, to me, this guy would be sacked 15,000 times in college. You say, oh, it's all his offensive line. But at a certain time, you got to make some adjustments. You got to get rid of the ball fast. You can blame it on the offensive coordinator. You can blame it on the offensive line. I put blame on the quarterback. You got to make some adjustments, whether it's blocking the tight end, blocking the running back. Got to do something. You're the play caller on the field. Make the adjustments. And it kind of concerns me he wasn't making those mental adjustments. Here's his in-depth breakdown, okay? Look at him. His throwing grade got a 71%. Mobility grade got an 83%. Awareness grade got a 58%. Here's his grades. You're more than welcome to look at him. And our last guy, Sam Howell. Six foot one, 220. About the same height and weight as Malik Willis. Uh, let's look and see what he says. My notes on him. This kid loves to throw the deep ball. Almost every play, it was either deep ball or he was running for yards. I would like to see him throw the ball over the middle of the field and outside the numbers. Instead, it was deep ball, deep ball, deep ball. He does a decent job of sending plays to throw it deep. I'm not sure if you will be able to do this in the NFL, though. His deep ball delivery is his greatest asset, although at times he tends to underthrow the ball slightly. I like to see that he throws well when in the pocket. It's collapsing. So, again, he's willing to – the pocket can collapse. He'll stay in the pocket, deliver a nice throw. This guy seems like he has a really good arm, but he does miss a good amount of throws. Air mills some and just misses – you know, just straight up misses some others. But he is also able to make some really good throws across the field. So, look, I want to see him be able to make more throws, NFL throws. Slants, out routes, you know, post corner routes, uh, just a post route, a drag route, an out route, whatever it may be, I want to see him do that. And in, in, in college – Check down, go ball. Check down, go ball, run the ball. Check down, go ball, run the ball. Over and over and over again. I don't like to see that in college. I really don't. So, again, his max uh, throw distance on film was 55 yards. Uh, he has good zip. Uh, he earned a 69 grade for me. Same thing with Malik Willis. Uh, good zip. 
Uh, good pocket awareness, right? He'll, he'll sit in there in the last second and then deliver a nice throw. And good pocket mobility, he'll stem plays. But his weaknesses, decision-making. I don't see him make great decisions. He'll either throw it deep or throw a check down. I don't see him really going through his progression, showing an out route, something that I want to see in college. And he misses a lot of throws. He misses a lot of throws, whether they're going across the middle of the field, deep pull, or underneath sometimes on the throw it. But last but not least, it's throwing on the run. It's throwing on the run is not great. He's going to stem plays. When he sets his feet and throws it, he's fine. But throwing the run, he's not great. He misses a lot of throws there. In-depth breakdown, got a 71% throwing grade, 67% mobility grade, and a 67% awareness grade. Here is his breakdown. More of the water to look at it. Do whatever you want with this. I really don't care what you do. If you like to look at it, great for you. All right, here we go. Let me take a sip of water. I feel like I'm about to have a heart attack because I've been talking for like 40 minutes straight. All right, here we go. 2022 quarterback draft prospect categories. Well, everyone says, Nick, this is a weaker draft class. And I'll, I'll answer your questions at the end. Some of you left questions for me on Instagram. If you follow us on Instagram, that's great. If not, ask us. I'll let you know what it is in the comment section. Prospect categories, okay? What quarterback falls into each category? And I try to come up with these categories, right? So you got the safest pick, the most potential, the sleeper, the NFL ready, the athletic but needs some work and has tools to work with. Every year I change the categories around, but one that usually stays is safest pick, most potential, sleeper, and NFL ready. These other two are just kind of built around those guys. The safest pick this year, in my opinion, is Kenny Pickett. He throws the ball accurately. He throws the ball precisely. He goes through his progressions, and he also has mobility. He's not willing to put his body on the line, but he's willing to go down, which will preserve his career. He is the safest pick, in my opinion. That means if you have the first overall pick or you're a guy that just needs a quarterback that's just going to be healthy and be good for years, that may be your guy. But will he be the best quarterback in the draft class? Hard to say. You know, I, I would gun that more towards someone like the guys that have the most potential. These are the guys that, in my opinion, have the ability to be the best quarterback in this draft class because their arm, their ability, running whatever it may be, whatever their true talents are, they look like they can be the best if they put it all together in a good system. And that I give to this year, Malik Willis and Matt Corral. I hate giving it to two guys, but I cannot decide. Malik Willis, man, he can run. His running ability is great. He has a good arm. It's just, can he put all that together? He has a lot of potential. Can he put all that together? Matt Corral has the best arm in the draft. Can he put that together and become more accurate to live up to the potential? But the safest pick, can he pick it? If you want to bet on someone having the most potential, you bet on these guys. But hell, let me tell you something. You're taking a risk betting on someone more like, I think, Malik Willis than you are someone like Matt Corral. Matt Corral has a throwing ability. You can win in the NFL throwing. Every running quarterback cannot win in the NFL, and that's just a damn fact. I'm sorry to tell you. If you're a running quarterback in college, you're not always going to be a great NFL quarterback. Uh, I didn't have an absolute sleeper this year. You know, I scouted a lot of guys. I didn't have a guy that's an absolute sleeper. I scouted two more guys that I scouted. Uh, Keaton Slovis and Tanner McKee, neither of them came out, but I will be scouting Bailey Zapp and uh, Jack Cohn, and they'll be in a future video, so make sure you stay tuned to that. Maybe they'll earn that award. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't have an NFL-ready quarterback either. Um, in my opinion, there's nobody that's absolutely NFL-ready. These guys are going to need time to be good. I mean, I guess you don't give that to Kenny Pickett as most NFL-ready because he's the safest pick. But nobody, no, none of these guys, none of the guys that scouted earn the right to be called NFL ready. Desmond Ritter, I put under the category as athletic, but needs work. He is athletic, but he's going to need a lot of work. So it might take years for him to pan out. He's not going to be a day one starter, in my opinion. And if he is, God bless him. He better go to a good team. And last but not least, Torsten Strong. I said he has tools to work with. But again, it's can he put those tools together? Has a great arm, but can he put all the tools to work with? And again, that's a coach's job. Here's my 2022 quarterback rankings via the grade scale. And again, this is a video. That, I mean, this is an order you just saw in the video. Kenny Pickett got the best grade according to my grade scale. Then Matt Corral, then Carson Strong, then Desmond Ritter, then Malik Willis, then Sam Howell. This is the unbiased grade scale. But I told you the flaws in it. A non-mobile quarterback like Carson Strong may get a higher grade if you don't look at mobility as, 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 a, as huge of a grade as you would in my grade scale. 
2022 draft compared to 2021 rankings via the grade scale. Okay, let's see. So I don't know. This year it tends to be that everybody, for some reason, a lot of people are grading lower this year according to my grade scale than last year. I, I could just be grading harsher. So in general, this is how they ranked. Trevor Lawrence had the highest grade last year according to my grade scale, followed by Zach Wilson, then Kellen Mond, right? And right down the list. I added this year's drop prospects to last to last year's prospect and put them all on a platter according to just the grade scale, not my personal analysis. So who, because I use the same grade both years. So this shows you unbiased who got graded higher than other people. Lawrence got one, Wilson two, Mon three. And Mon, again, somebody that's not looking so good so far. Pickett got four, Fields got five, Jones got six, Corral got seven. Lance got eight, Strong got nine, Ritter got 10, Willis got 11, Howell got 12, Trask got 13, Jamie Newman got 14. So what does all this mean? Well, according to my grade scale, you know, Kenny Pickett would be the fourth best quarterback compared to last year, but he's above people like Fields, Jones, and Quarrel, according to my grade scale. You know, so he Pickett's better than Jones, according to my grade scale last year, but yeah, he's worse than Kellen Mond. That's interesting. You know, that is interesting. Pick is better than Justin Fields, but he's worse than Kellamon. Isn't that interesting? Well, let's hop into the next one. So you didn't bore the water in the hip pause and look at this. Again, this is you in the unbiased grade scale. Here you go. I hate doing this. I hate doing this. 2022 quarterback rankings being my personal analysis. It is so hard to come up with a ranking. It is so hard to come up with a ranking, but I did it. And it could be terribly wrong, right? We can look a bit back at this three years from now and say, hey, Nick, you're wrong. Look, it really truly comes down to who goes to what team. If you go to a team with great weapons, you're going to have a better career. My goal, this order, in my opinion, is who I think is the safest pick and has a lot of potential to be the best. And that's why in my personal analysis, I got pick at one, Corral two, Willis three, Howell four, Ritter five, and Strong six. That's my personal analysis. That's my ranking. I feel like Pickett is the safest and has enough potential to put him over someone like Corral and Willis. Howell, I also like. Um, did it got like the lowest grade on my grade scale, but I like him. Ritter five, Strong six. Last but not least, 2022 draft compared to 2021 rankings via personal analysis. This is me not changing my 2021 rankings. I got to leave them the same. And last year I had, again, I showed you on the very first slide, you know, second slide, I'm sorry, on who, how I had them ranked. And I'm not touching that. So now I'm just adding the guys this year to last year and ranking them. According to last year, my personal analysis, I still have Wilson as the best quarterback out of anybody in the last two draft classes. I still got Trevor Lawrence as the second best. M Jones as the third best. And Mond as the fourth best. And Lance as the fifth best. And Fields as the second best. Wow, isn't that nuts? You got all of them better than any quarterback in this year's draft? Yeah, I actually do. And maybe this will change. But right now, I got the entire draft class from last year better than any quarterback in this year's draft. So far, the top six from last year are all ranked above. And Mond is making me worried. I'm making that very clear. I don't know if he'll be given the chance, and maybe I was wrong with Kellen Mond. But right now, I got all six guys. And I never do this. Believe me, this is not because the media is influencing me. Why I truly think that the top six guys are more talented last year than they are this year. Number seven will be Pickett, then Corral, then Willis, and Howell, then Mills, and Redder, then Strong, and Trask. They're all, these guys are better than Trask. They're better than Trask and Newman, but they're not better than anybody from last year's draft class, in my opinion. Now, I'm going to go back to me, and I'm going to talk to you about a few questions you left on my Instagram. All right, I am back. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, look, a few questions that you guys asked me. The first thing was, is a quarterback draft class as weak as people say it is? And I just gave you my opinion. Look, I do have most of the quarterbacks ranked lower than last year's draft class. But you understand, and they also did score lower on my grade scale, as you saw on the other thing, than, than the quarterbacks from last year's draft class. 
But look, it, the grade scale could just be because I'm score I'm scoring harder this year for some reason. I feel like I'm grading harder. And that's not because I said this year, I'm gonna grade harder. No, it just happened. And I, I do think that, or, or maybe I'm not grading harder. Maybe I'm grading the exact same way, but these guys are actually worse than the guys last year. That's a possibility. Hard to see. We're going to have to look a few years from now and see what one it actually truly was. Uh, here's another thing, okay? The true question that everyone asked me is, is this. Nick, you know, are the guys truly worse? And then I'm going to say, yeah, I think that they're actually a little bit worse talented. But the truth is, and what's going to balance these quarterbacks out from last year's draft class is, Zach Wilson went to the Jets. That's a terrible spot to go. Fields went to the Bears. That's not a great spot either, to be quite honest with you. Jones went to the Patriots. All right, that's good. Uh, Lance went to the Niners. All right, that's good. You know, Lawrence went to the Jaguars. Uh, you know, that's not so hot. Okay, so the quarterbacks this year, when you look at the teams that really need a quarterback, Steelers are in play for a quarterback this year. They have weapons. The Panthers are in need for a quarterback possibly this year. They have weapons. The Commanders need, you know, need a quarterback this year. They have some weapons. The Saints need a quarterback this year. They have some weapons. The Buccaneers out need a quarterback this year. They have weapons. Let me tell you something. That balances it out. Zach Wilson, a very talented quarterback, someone that I think is the most talented quarterback of the last two year drafts. Number one. Number one. They got someone like Corson Strong, who I think that's you know not not the most talented out of everybody towards the bottom. Carson Strong goes to the Buccaneers. Zach Wilson goes to the Jets. Who has a better career? Now you got a debate because, again, Carson Strong has a crazy phenomenal arm. It's not mobile like Zach Wilson is, but he has better weapons. You got, you know, uh, you got Mike Evans. You got O.J. Howard possibly if he comes back. You got Robert Mikowski if he comes back. You got Leonard Fournette if he comes back. You got, you know, they got weapons there. A lot of them could be leaving because of Brady now, right? You got Godwin if they bring him back. Again, a lot of questions. It's a lot of questions, okay? And he got a pretty decent defense. Steelers are a great landing spot, right? If if Kenny Pickett goes to the Steelers and they bring back Juju, or maybe they don't, but even if they don't, Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool, Matt, Pat Fryermuth, Najee Harris. All right, now you're creating something. You get an offensive lineman. He could be a very good quarterback. So again, having my career projections is something you're going to see in a future video. And that's another question you guys asked me. Or are you predicting the career in this video or just ranking the prospects? I want to make this clear. This video is based on who is the most talented and who I would draft, right? If I, if I could put all these guys on the same team, who I think would succeed the best. And again, you had my list, right? It was Pickett one, then Corral, then Willis, blah, 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 down the list. That is my personal analysis, who I would take. If we had to start a team and everybody goes on the Jets, I think that Kenny Pickett will be the best quarterback. That's my opinion. Followed by Corral, followed by Willis. I think that Corral and Willis have more potential than Pickett. But right now, my gut tells me that Willis, I mean, that 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 Pickett would have the best career because he's just the safest. I feel like you can't go wrong with that. You can't. Maybe something will change before the draft. All right, so look, this video was simply based on ranking the prospect of all of them having on the same team, who would be the best on that team. And where they end up is a huge piece, in my opinion, on their career trajectory. And again, to have a better representation for me on that video, what video will tell you who I think will have the best career? You're going to have to wait until after the draft and when me and Mike both do our draft grades. Then I will tell you who I think will have the best career based on their destination. Again, big things can change, right? I mean, uh, let's see. If, if Matt Corral goes to the Steelers and – and uh, Kenny Pickett goes to the Lions. All right. Now I might be saying, all right, I think that Matt Corral, because I really have, I think that he has the most potential. Him and Willis, he went to a team that has weapons. And then he got a quarterback like Pickett that went to a team with no weapons. All right. Now I think that, yeah, I, I'm going to, I'm, I'm still going to say Pickett's the most, you know, the safest pick. He is my number one lock guy right now, this second during this video. It could change in the future. We'll see. Uh, but my point is, is that then it could change. And I'll say in the draft video, hey, I think that Pickett is going to be the best. I mean, I think that Corral is going to be the best quarterback in this draft because he went to teams with weapons. Best career. Okay. 
statistics, career accolades, all that, that, that is mainly decided on what team and organization you end up on and how they build around you. And my prediction on that will be in a future video. But my, 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 my rankings in this video is who are the best prospects? And hey, things can change. I mean, for the love of God, look at Jamarcus Russell, one of the best prospects ever, but never panned out. And all I do is look at film and I make my opinion. No, no, no bias. I don't listen to anybody else's opinions. I can promise you that. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'll have time stance on each player's. Uh, we got running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, interior linemen, offensive tackles, defensive tackles, edge rushers, linebackers, cornerbacks, safeties. We got to do our salary cap review videos, our NFL draft rates, our, our coaching rates, and so much more. So stay tuned. We do a great job with the offseason. I hope to see you back for more of those videos. See you guys soon. Peace. We are built better. Any questions, let us know in the comment section below. See you guys soon. Peace. We are built better.